Hey guys, yes I know I'm milking this topic a little bit, but it's just too juicy. There's just yet another flat earther on the horizon who just can't stand the Perseverance Mars rover landing. He presents some different arguments, so maybe it's worth it to respond. <laughs> just kidding, flat earthers are never worth responding to, I don't even know why I'm doing this. Hello flat earth researchers, debaters, and debunkers. When you first hear about flat earth, the most challenging thing to do is to even begin questioning the perception or belief that we live on the outside of a rotating globe. Because of course it would appear that it's already been proven as a scientific fact that we are another planet in the solar system and that we've already gained the uh, scientific knowledge and expertise to send people off to the moon and back again safely and of course to send probes off to the dusty red planet of Mars millions of miles away. Well yeah, the fact of the Earth being spherical is such a basic piece of knowledge you could say it has the same validity as 1 plus 1 equals 2. The Earth revolving around the Sun? Proven. Other planets in the solar system? Proven. Flat Earthers' brains being flatter than the flat Earth they believe in? Proven. The idea or the understanding that we live on a globe is so embedded in our collective mindset as scientific consensus. Funny how you choose to use the word scientific consensus because it literally is scientific consensus. That's not arguable. All the scientists in the world believe in a round earth that revolves around the sun. I think you just got it mixed up with scientific fact or something. I don't know what you're thinking. When we get the question why would they lie, it often comes with the underlying assumption that because there are hundreds of thousands of individuals employed in the aerospace industry across the earth in various different countries, they would all have to be in on it and it would be just impossible for all these people to tell a lie or not realize that they were part of a bigger lie. Okay, so two things to add on to that point there. First, the point that is being made is that when there are so many people working for NASA and universities, it becomes increasingly difficult to keep that alive because eventually someone somewhere will leak information and that would be huge news. However, nothing like that has ever happened and when we're talking about tens or hundreds of thousands of people, thinking that every single one of these people would keep quiet is simply too big of a leap of faith. Second of all, it's not just the people in the United States we're talking about here. Newsflash, NASA isn't the only space program out there. Just counting the government controlled ones, there are over 70 other ones out there situated in other countries such as France, China, India, Japan, Russia, etc, etc. Hmm, apparently they're all in the conspiracy. They're all lying about the round earth. For some reason, everyone's stories are incredibly consistent with one another with the most minute detail of each claim. Hmm, I wonder why and how each of these space programs and universities from all over the world are coordinating so well that even when they're competing with one another, they can somehow agree to spread the exact same lie. Or, of course, it's not a lie and they all came to the same conclusion because it's the truth. But uh, when you look at the way any organization is structured, then most duties and jobs are very compartmentalized and vast majority of uh, individuals working in an organization only play a small part in uh, the end result and are not really not privy to what's going on in the upper echelons. Forgive me for saying that is a pretty bad argument. First of all, even if you're working on a small thing for the organization, to be working at NASA you would at least have to recognize that the Earth is a sphere. A lot of mathematical equations, engineering, and planning has to be done that simply would not be possible without conforming to a spherical Earth. Second of all, it's funny how you make this claim and yet you believe NASA fabricates everything and uses CGI. The thing is, if they are truly fabricating it, they wouldn't need nearly as many employees. With the pace that NASA releases information, you wouldn't need more than a team of, I don't know, 10 people? The fact that all these employees exist must mean they're at least doing something more significant. Third of all, the argument being brought up that you're trying to debunk is not relevant to if these people work in the higher up decision makings of the so-called round earth conspiracy, but rather that it is incredibly difficult to keep a secret like this to such a scale. So yeah, you completely missed the point of the argument and your claim doesn't even help your position anyway due to how flawed it is. So it would be actually very easy to have hundreds and thousands of people working in very compartmentalized uh, positions and only doing what they specialize in and so they wouldn't have to be lying. They are in fact doing good science. 
there's no denying that a lot of the technology that we take for granted nowadays, even the software and the hardware that we use, is a result perhaps of uh, the efforts in the Apollo missions where many brilliant minds collaborated to downsize hardware and software and come up with new ways of doing things in order to uh, communicate and navigate and put all this equipment into uh, uh, something the size of a, a capsule that was put on the top of a rocket. Oh, wonderful. So you're saying the technology in the Apollo missions were actually built, but just not used in an actual Apollo mission. I don't even know what pointing that out does for you. Your position is all over the place now, and your claims are getting more and more outrageous by the minute. Are you saying that people doing the actual science are also deceived in their building technology they think are being used to send rockets into space, but is actually not? What in the world? So these people who sit in the live stream moderating the progress of the rover are just being fed fake data by whoever is controlling the higher ups? Like your claim is so outrageous at this point that it's making my head spin. So yes, there is real science going on on the ground here on Earth and many brilliant minds have contributed to uh, extraordinary developments in the scientific field. Where do you draw the line then? The idea of the Earth being round and revolves around the Sun is actual science. The idea that space exists is actual science and these scientific concepts are incredibly intertwined with how engineering and programming and designing is for these scientists you are mentioning. Without actual science such as gravitational equations and physical laws of space, you can't possibly design software and hardware that would comply. That's like saying when building a car, the tires of the car are fake and don't exist, but then claiming that the engine of the car exists and that it is good science. Well, guess what? The engine wouldn't work nor would people be able to build an engine if it was compatible to something that doesn't exist, aka the wheels. So your argument is just completely outrageous here. Uh, and of course, ultimately, what often happens with technology developed for or on behalf of NASA is it does end up coming back into use in, in a commercial way. So how is the helicopter being built specifically to fly on the planet of Mars going to be helpful on Earth? Please enlighten me. So NASA itself is, is an agent uh, for commercial entities and a lot of money and commerce and jobs are created just because there is a mission to do something like go to the moon or go to Mars. I mean, I guess that would explain why NASA has all that funding, even if they are for some reason faking Mars landings. But still, no, that's just a stupid argument. The technology we have today isn't something that was a byproduct of scientists working on space missions. You pulled this out of thin air without providing a shred of evidence, and of course your audience will eat it up like candy anyway. The way you speak of science also shows you don't understand science whatsoever, since you think that technological process is as simple as repurposing something else. Absolutely Absolutely not. Okay, one last thing I want to respond to, so let's skip forward a bit. And then we have the questions as to whether the technology that has been developed would actually work in the environment that we are told it is in. For example, the Mars rover is said to have been parachuted down to the surface and then it was uh, let down on cables beneath a cradle with thrusters on it and left there to do its thing and it apparently survived all this to send photographs and footage back to us. However, has any real testing ever been done on the Earth to simulate the kind of environment that uh, it will be experiencing there? I like how you ask the question implying that the answer is no, but the real answer is, of course there are simulations that have been done on Earth. Hell, NASA even has a chamber that mimics atmospheric pressure on Mars, as well as something that helps simulate the gravity. By the way, that is done mostly by using a string to pull upwards as much as the difference between the Earth's and Mars's gravitational accelerations. So yeah, the mini helicopter ingenuity was tested in such an environment. Basically, all I'm seeing in this video are claims after claims without even providing a shred of evidence. Just because you could think of an alternative to what actually happened does not make it true. You can speculate all you want, but at the end of the day, it won't hold any weight unless there is some sort of proof. Honestly, even though the claims you made here are not very good, at least I found a flat earther who admitted that NASA is doing good science. You'll never see that anywhere else, I swear. Also makes for a great video title.